On the frontier, the chuck wagon was a place for food and conversation on the trail. Cookie just finished breakfast here at the Agile Chuck Wagon Podcast. Grab a cup of coffee and stay for a short talk on an Agile and Lean software delivery topic. Here's your host, Chuck Durfee. Today's topic is Principles of Kanban. This is a continuation of the intro to Kanban cast in which I talked about the first two principles, which are the ones from personal Kanban. Visualize your work and limit your work in progress. So at this point, you have a Kanban board that has some states on it, like to do, doing, and done, and you've decided to limit the number of things that are in the doing column, the work in progress, or WIP. Principle three is to manage flow. What are we talking about? We're talking about how work gets onto your board and how work gets off of your board. In personal Kanban, there's only one way to get work onto the board, and that is to put it in the to-do column. And there's only one way to get work off your board, and that is to complete it successfully. That might be fine for an individual, but when you start talking about teams and you start talking about deadlines and deliverables and things along that line, you may find that that's too simplistic for your needs. For example, you might find work that needs to be abandoned or canceled. Maybe the work's no longer required, or maybe you can no longer successfully complete the work as it was specified. For example, if you decided that you need to wash your car before it rains, and there's a sudden rainstorm, you're not going to be able to wash your car before it rains. And so you might need something like an abandoned or a canceled state. The point of this is to make sure that you understand how every piece of work can get onto your board and every piece of work can get off of your board and to make sure that everything that you do ends up on the board somehow. If you don't control your inputs to your board, you may end up doing work that isn't required or isn't being tracked. If you don't control how work gets off your board, while you may lose sight of work, and it will cause problems when we start talking about some of the further principles. The fourth principle is my favorite. It is to make policies explicit. By policy here, I mean the rules that you follow for every piece of work that you do. That's important. Remember that Kanban is a lean process, and we're trying to eliminate waste. And one of the largest pieces of waste is exception handling. So you want to try to limit the number of exceptions or the amount of special handling that you do of each individual piece of work. And that has some interesting consequences, too. For example, you might find that your work falls into a few distinct categories. Let's take the post office, for example. They handle regular mail one way. They handle packages a different way. And they handle express mail a third way. Now, even though each of those different kinds of mail is handled differently. Each piece of express mail is handled the same. Each regular stomped envelope is handled the same way, and so on. Those are called classes of service. And you can get into some interesting business scenarios with classes of service. Express mail, for example, costs more than regular mail, but there's a guarantee that it'll deliver faster. So you get into this idea of service level agreements, where for a particular class of thing, you agree that maybe 90% of the time it will get delivered on a certain time, and within a certain time period, I mean. And that's a way that Kanban can introduce predictability into your system. The fifth principle is to implement feedback loops. What does this mean? Well, we're just trying to figure out whether the system works or whether it doesn't work. And how do you figure that out? Well, you need to do some measurements to try to determine if or where your system is falling down. In lean manufacturing, this is pretty easy. There are a lot of controls that you can put in place. You can have your machines tell you when they're not working to tolerance and so on. In software, it's a little bit more difficult, but I can tell you that with some of the advances that have been made in the last half century in information theory, There are a lot of interesting metrics that you can draw from looking at software delivery. And to me, this and the previous principle, making policies explicit, is the draw of Kanban. And I think it's why many people are trying to marry Scrum and Kanban into some sort of Scrum-bon. Now, the last item is one that was added later by David Anderson. It's the sixth principle, and that is to 
improve collaboratively, innovate incrementally. This is the idea of doing something like a retrospective, where you get together, you brainstorm how the system could be improved, and then you choose a small item, you design and experiment around that item, and by experiment, I mean you have a hypothesis that if we do something different, you'll get a beneficial result, and then you actually try it out and you measure whether that beneficial result actually happened. You test your theory. And if the theory works out, great, you incorporate it into your system. If it doesn't work, why, maybe you design a different experiment or you abandon the theory. Those are the six principles of Kanban, and that concludes our introduction to Kanban. Thank you. We're packing up the chuck wagon for another day in the field. Thanks for listening. Agile Chuck Wagon is a production of Durf Web. Chuck Durfee is an Agile coach and software developer from Denver, Colorado, USA. Direct questions or comments to Chuck at his email, chuck at agilechuckwagon.com. The background music is called Waiting for the Rain, uploaded by user Sky Coyote to the community audio section of the Internet Archive under a Creative Commons attribution and share-alike license. Hope to see you again soon. Happy trails.